Okay, welcome everyone. This is Scott here again with a brand new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And so what I have here is my next episode of my live option trading series where I show you all the trades and all the adjustments I made this past week. And this was actually a very busy week. And also today is the expiration day for the month of December. So I've basically been cleaning out a lot of my portfolio by taking off my December positions. And I'll talk more about that later. And so also in this video, you're going to see a new position I put on in NVIDIA and also two more positions I put on in Roku. Already took one of them off for a profit, I believe, yesterday. And additionally, you'll see some other things too, like how I took off my AMD position. That was more of an intricate position with short stock and also a short put and short call. And then finally, towards the end of this video, I'll be giving you a portfolio update and I'll go over each one of my current positions. Now, as always, before we get started here, in case you are brand new to the channel, I just want to let you know that you can also find me on Skillshare as well, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a full one month free trial. And so with that being said, I'm going to stop here and play a few clips that I recorded from this previous week that will again show you in real time some of the new trades I made in NVIDIA and also Roku and then a few of the other things I mentioned as well. And we're going to get started here with how I took off my AMD position. Okay, today is Monday, December 13th, and a few updates I want to give you here right now, the first of which involves my AMD position. And in particular, I took this one off this morning for a nice profit. So I want to show you exactly how I did that because this was a bit of an intricate position. So as you can see here, these were the two orders I had to execute or that I had to make in order to take off the entire position. Now for context, when I first put on this position, I was short a simple strangle as I still was in this case here, where in particular, I sold the 160 strike call option alongside the 130 strike put option. And then because along the way with this trade here, because I did face some losses, that's why I had to roll up my put option to the 147 strike to take in extra credit. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second here. But essentially to remove this position, I had to buy back both these contracts, of course, and then also with this order, buy back 100 shares of AMD stock. And the reason why I had to do that is because if we come to the trade tab now and take a look at the option chain on AMD, I was in the December expiration cycle for this trade. And so that's because, as you can see on the put side here, my 147 strike put option is super, super far in the money. AMD right now is only at a price of about 134 bucks per share. And so as a result, the way I always manage my trades, should a stock fall below a short put strike that I have on, is once that happens, once AMD fell below 147, I shorted 100 shares of the stock. And in that way, that totally covers my obligations on the short put option here. Right, because if I were to get assigned on this contract, I would have to buy 100 shares of AMD at a price of 147. But if that was also the price or close to the price where I shorted those shares to begin with, then through that assignment process, I don't make or lose any money. But I still always get to keep and walk away with a premium that I sold the put option for at the beginning. And so with that being said, now we can come back to the monitor tab. That was the context I wanted to provide you. So at this point, we can go ahead and pull up the calculator. And we can now figure out the final PL or the final outcome of that trade. So initially, when I first put on the position, when I sold the 160 strike call option along with the 130 strike put option, the initial credit I sold those contracts for was $504. And then, as I mentioned previously, there was a time, or a few times actually, where I was facing some losses on this position. And that's because if we come back to the charts real quick here, and I'll go ahead and zoom in a bit. So keeping in mind, my call strike was at 160. Obviously, as you can see here, there was a few times where AMD was piercing through my call strike. And as a result, every time that happens, I have to purchase 100 shares of the stock. That's how I cover my obligations on the short call option. But then should AMD reverse and go back down lower and fall back below my call strike, I have to sell those shares and get rid of them and do so for a very small loss. Now, if that happens only a few times, no big deal. But if AMD bounces through my call strike many, many times over and over again, those small losses do start to add up. And that is why, if we come to the trade tab now, that is why I had to roll up my put option from the 130 strike all the way to the 147 strike. Basically, I bought this put option back and then sold a new one. And through that process, I took in additional credit. And that's to compensate for those losses I took from having to buy and sell the stock over here. And then, of course, after making that adjustment, that's when AMD took a nosedive and fell all the way back down to about 134. So with that in mind, if we come back to the monitor tab, and let me go ahead and pull back up the calculator here. 
the total amount of money I lost from having to repeatedly buy and sell the stock amounted to $366. So I subtract 366, and that still leaves me with an overall net credit of 138. So therefore, as I explained to make up for these losses, that's why I rolled up my put option. And in doing so, I took in an additional credit of $202. So we add back 202, and that brings my total net credit on the whole trade back to 340. Now today, as you can see here with this order, I bought back both the contracts for a total debit of $1,232. This was step one of closing the whole trade. So now come back here and subtract 1232. And that brings me back down to minus $892. But of course, don't forget the last time that AMD fell below my put strike of 147, I shorted 100 shares of the stock. So now I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen here, but don't forget this number, 892. And so when I shorted those shares, the price I got filled at was $146.79. So pretty darn close to my put strike of 147. And then as the second step for closing out this whole trade, as you can see with this order, I bought back those 100 shares to close at a price of 135.61. So now we subtract 135.61. And that means on the short shares, I made a profit of $11.18 per share. So then times 100 for the 100 shares, and that's a total profit of 1,118 bucks. So finally, last step here is to subtract the 892 I lost from the earlier calculations, right? And the net result is still a profit of 226 bucks. And this was not too far off my initial profit target of around 250. So in this case, I did miss the mark by a little bit, but not by too much. So that's AMD. And then also briefly, I want to mention these other orders here today. And we'll start with my NUE orders here. So right now with my NUE short strangle, if you come down here, as of this morning, I was short the 107 strike put option and also the 114 strike call option. But just like what I did with my AMD trade, I did roll up my put option this morning from 107 to the 111 strike. And in doing so, took in additional credit. And the reason why I did so is because, as you can see here with these orders that got triggered first this morning, NUE was bouncing through my call strike of 114. Right, So I had to buy the shares at 114.25 and then I sold them at 113.98. And then you can see it happen again right here with these two orders and so on and so forth. And this has happened quite a few times in the past as well. So the losses on having to repeatedly buy and sell the stock have begun to add up. And that's why I made this adjustment right here. So in this one order, I bought back to close the 107 strike put option and then sold to open a new contract at the 111 strike. And in doing so, took in an extra 75 bucks of premium or credit. And then NUE did cross my call strike one last time. So I bought the shares once more at a price of 114.20 and it has gone higher ever since then. I think right now, if you come back to the charts real quick and go to NUE, yes, as you can see today, the closing price for the stock was 115.55. So at this point, this stock can go to the moon for all I care. I've got the 100 shares. My call option is totally covered. So again, it does not matter how much higher NUE goes. And then lastly here in regards to what happened with GameStop this morning, for this trade, if we come down here and take a look at my current state, or the current state of my position. With this trade, I'm still short the same options, 145 strike put option, also the 190 strike call option. And now as you can see here, I am short 100 shares of this stock because it did fall super, super hard today, well below my put strike. And that's what happened with these orders right here. So with this one in particular, I shorted the shares at 144.76, a bit below my put strike. And then GameStop was kind of bouncing through that strike a few times. So I had to buy the shares back, short them again, and actually, this was the last time I had to do that. And now as of the market close, if we come back to the charts one last time and go to GME, GameStop closed at a price of 136.88. So well, well below my put strike now. But again, same thing with my AMD trade. Does not matter how much lower this stock goes. I've shorted the full amount of shares. My put option is totally covered. So come Friday, which is the expiration date for this trade, as you can see, I'm in the December expiration cycle here, four days left. So this stock can go to zero for all I care. And by Friday, I will still walk away with a very nice profit or perhaps a bit sooner. It just depends really on how much lower the stock goes between now and then. All right, today is Wednesday, December 15th. And this morning, I'm going to place a new trade here in NVIDIA. The reason being is first off, if we come down here to the implied volatility chart, right now the IV for this stock is still very, very high. So in particular, we're looking at a value of about 59.63%, which if you compare it to the past over the previous one year or so, this is definitely on the higher end for NVIDIA. 
And so as a result, this translates to an IV rank of 83%, that's very high, and also an IV percentile of 98%, also very, very high. So of course, what all this means here is simply that the prices for NVIDIA options are going to be inflated for the time being. And therefore, that makes for a good opportunity to sell those contracts. Now, if we come over here to the actual price action chart, let's uh, zoom in a little bit here. You can see as of late, NVIDIA has gone through a bit of a sell-off right here. And in particular, it came down to a low of about 272-ish bucks per share, which is also the low of this huge breakup candle that happened about a couple weeks ago. And oftentimes when you see a very large break up candle like this, and if the stock ever returns back down to it, typically what you will see is the stock testing the low of the candle. And so again, if you look at this gray line right here on my cursor, and you follow it back to yesterday's candle, specifically the low of that candle, as you can see, Nvidia did test the low of that very large breakup candle. And the most important thing here is that Nvidia did bounce off that point and resume back higher. So point being is I do look at this setup here as potentially very bullish. So therefore, if we come over to the trade tab now, and for this trade, I am going to be looking in the January expiration cycle with 37 days left to go. And in particular, I'm going to be selling just a naked put option at the 267.5 strike. Kind of a weird strike, but that is what it is. The reason being is this strike here is pretty much just beneath the low of that very large breakup candle. So if Nvidia does come back down lower over the next few days or weeks and potentially test that support level again, then like I said, my put option here will still be untested because my strike is below that point. And so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the bid price here. That brings up this sell order down below. Just gonna sell one contract because of course, this stock is pretty expensive, but because of that fact, and also because implied volatility is very high right now, I can sell this one put option for over $1,000. And the mid price for this contract is about 10.55, so I'll try and get filled right around there. Go to confirm and send. Buying power effect is about 3,600 bucks. That's fine, so I'll go to send. And there we go, just got filled and price improved to 1060. Very nice. Great, and then last step here is to set up my buying order to buy this contract back, should I be correct with this trade. So down below, this is the order, just gonna buy the contract back, and I'll do so, as usual, for half price. So half of 1060 is 530. So ideally, if Nvidia can climb a bit higher, and also if that happens, I do expect to see implied volatility contract a bit more. And that will also help to bring the price of this option down. So again, ideally, if those two things can work together, then once the price of this contract here falls down to 530 bucks, then I'll buy this contract back and book my profits. So last step is to make this a GTC order so it's always in place. Confirm and send and send. Okay, here I am back again, still on the same day, Wednesday, December 15th. And I'm going to place one more trade this morning in Roku. So in particular for this stock, we have a pretty similar story in terms of the implied volatility. We'll come down here and take a look. And right now the IV has shot up significantly all the way to 82.56%. So this is definitely one of the highest points the IV for Roku has been over the entire past one year. So right now we're seeing an IV rank of 94%, very good, and an IV percentile of 99%. And this makes sense because Roku is down by over 10% this morning, which is about 22 and a half bucks. And typically when stocks go down in a huge way, that's when you see a very nice spike in the implied volatility. Or in other words, a nice spike in the fear or uncertainty around this company. Those two concepts are basically synonymous. And now in terms of the price action chart, let's come back up here and take a quick look. Let me zoom in a bit more. So right now Roku is coming back down and retesting the lows that it made a few weeks ago. Right around $196.94 was the absolute low that it made just a few days ago. And so my assumption here is this point could act as a nice support level to see a short-term bounce in the stock, especially given that Roku has come down in price one, two, three, maybe four, five days in a row. So again, this big series of down moves combined with a possible touching of a nice support level, I do think the odds favor a nice bounce for the short term. Of course, I could be totally wrong. That's always a possibility. But I personally do think the chance of an up move here is greater than the chance of a continuation down lower, at least for the very short term. So with that said, we'll come to the trade tab now. And in a very similar fashion to what I did with Nvidia, I'm going to sell a simple naked put option here. In this case, I'm going to sell the 180 strike put option with a 30 delta. This is typically where I like to be when selling either put options or call options, somewhere around the 30 to 40 delta. And this stock is actually cheaper than Nvidia, but I can still sell the put option for about the same exact price. And that's because the implied volatility just in general for the stock, not including the IV rank or IV percentile, but just the IV level itself at 83%, 
This is actually much higher than for NVIDIA, which I believe was around 60%. So again, that's why even though Roku is a cheaper stock than NVIDIA, I can still sell the Roku put options for about the same price. So we'll come back to the trade tab now and make this trade official. Go ahead and click on the bid price here. Brings up the sell order down below. Just gonna sell one contract, one 80 strike put option. And the mid price for this option is about 1,030 bucks. So I'll try and get filled around there. Go to confirm and send. Buying power effect is about 2,100 bucks. That's fine, so we'll go to send. And no fills yet on this order, so we'll come back to the monitor tab and take a look here. Right there is my order. So as you can see, my limit price is the exact same as the mark price, but I might have to come down a few more pennies. So cancel and replace. We'll come down to maybe 1020 and see what happens here. And there we go, just got filled at 1020, very nice. And of course, last step is to set up my buying order once again to buy this contract back. So down below, buy back just the one contract and I'll do so for half price. So half of 1020 is 510. And same deal with my Nvidia trade. Hopefully implied volatility can contract for Roku over the next few days. And also, I do wanna see the stock rise in price and that will almost certainly cause implied volatility to contract as well. So again, if those two things can work together in my favor, then perhaps I can buy this contract back for half price. So last step here, make it a GTC order, confirm and send, send, all done with this new trade. And then one last thing to mention here with both of these new trades in Roku and Nvidia, as I mentioned in previous clips of this video, if I'm totally dead wrong on these trades and if these stocks fall below my put strikes, I will short 100 shares of each stock. And that's also one of the reasons why I do prefer selling options that are somewhat far out of the money to give myself a bit more cushion also in case I am wrong. So in the case for Roku here, this stock can fall from about 200 bucks where it is currently all the way down to 180 and I still don't have to do anything with my trade. It's only in the case where the stock falls below 180, at that point I do have to do something. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, today is Thursday, December 16th and a few updates I wanna give you here first and then I'll put on a new trade. First off, in my Roku position, I did actually go ahead and take this one off for a nice little profit this morning. So if you recall from the previous clip, I sold this option for about 1,020 bucks or so. And this morning, as you can see here, I did buy it back for a debit of 630 bucks. So I did close this one a bit before my profit target of about 50%. And if you come to the charts real quick here, I'll show you why. Let's go to ROKU. So normally I would indeed wait for my profit target to get hit before I take off a position. Let's zoom in here a bit. But as I explained with this trade here, I was waiting for a small little bounce. And today, that's exactly what happened. Roku is up by over 10 bucks at the moment, which is about 5%. And then moreover, on top of that, if we come down to the implied volatility chart, we're seeing a pretty nice contraction in the IV as well. Now, sure, I could have held onto this trade for a bit longer and potentially hit my 50% profit target. But for cases like this, where I do make the majority of my profits in the first day or so, I don't mind taking the trade off a bit early and just booking those profits. And so now this gives me the opportunity to reload on the stock and place a brand new trade. So if we come over to the trade tab now and we'll take a look at the option chain, still gonna be in the January expiration cycle for this brand new trade as well. And for this one, I'm thinking of selling a slightly bullish skewed strangle, which basically means I'm gonna sell an out of the money put option alongside an out of the money call option, but I'll make sure the delta on the call option is less than on the put option. So on the call side here, I'm thinking of selling the 270 strike call has a 17 delta. And then on the put side, I think I'm gonna sell the 185 strike put option with a 22 delta. So really this is a pretty delta neutral or directionally neutral strangle, but, but I definitely don't mind leaning a little bit bullish because this stock has been killed pretty recently. And also one more thing in regards to my call option here, I did intentionally choose the 270 strike also because if we come to the charts real quick again, let me expand this down. As you can see right around here, a couple of days ago, Roku did have a very large pop in its price. There was some news that they basically renewed their deal with Google to allow YouTube to appear on the Roku platform once again. And so, of course, there was a lot of excitement around that announcement. And so in the case where Roku does decide to come back up and test the high of this breakdown candle, once all that euphoria kind of went away, again, that's why I chose the 270 strike call option that is a bit further above that point or the high of this candle here. And then also by choosing the 185 strike put option, obviously, as you can see here, the strike is well below any of the recent lows that Roku has made in the past couple of days here. So with that said, we'll come back to the trade tab now and we'll make this trade official. So I'm gonna right click on the call option here and go to sell and then strangle. And down below is the order, gonna sell one contract, 270 strike call option, and also alongside that sell one contract of the 185 strike put option. There we go. 
And very nice for this one position, I can collect over 1,070 bucks or so. So I'll try and lock in a price of exactly 1070. Go to confirm and send. Buying power effect is about 2,000 bucks. That's fine. So we'll go to send. And there we go. Just got filled and price improved to 1080. Awesome. So that's great. And then of course, last step, you know the drill. I'm gonna set up my buying order to buy these contracts back if their price does fall by about 50%. So here we go, this is the order. I'm gonna buy back both of these contracts, 270 strike call option, 185 strike put option, and I'll try and do so for half price. So half of 1080 is about 540, or exactly 540. Then lastly, make it a GTC order, so it's always in place, confirm and send, send, all done with Roku. And then lastly, here in this clip, let's come back to the monitor tab and take a look at my other orders that got executed this morning. And so for NUE, there was a few times where this stock was bouncing through both my put strike and also my call strike. And just as a reminder for this position, I am short the 111 strike put option, as you can see here, and also the 114 strike call option. So a pretty narrow short strangle, and that's because I have had to make some adjustments to this position a few times. And now as of this moment, NUE is above my 114 call strike. So that's why I'm also long 100 shares of the stock at the moment. And then also in a similar fashion with GameStop, as you can see with these orders, GameStop was bouncing through my put strike. It looks like just one time so far, not a huge deal. But chances are I will have to make at least one more adjustment in both my GameStop position and also NUE tomorrow, which is also expiration day, because I definitely do want to cut down on some of the losses I've taken on both of these trades here. So stay tuned for that. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed those few clips there. And so now finally in this video, let's go over my current positions so you can see where everything is at right now. Now starting off first with my Beyond Me position, let me expand this tab. As of right now, you can see I'm short the 71 strike put option and also the 75 strike call option, two contracts each. And then also I'm short 200 shares of the stock. So if we come to the charts real quick here and go to actually already have Beyond Meat pulled up and let me uh, move these charts down a bit here and we'll zoom in. So again, keeping in mind my put strike is right around here at 71. That means of course with the stock being below 71 by a significant amount at 67 bucks per share, that's why I'm short 200 shares of the stock. Those 200 shares are basically totally covering my put options. Now also one important thing to note about this position, if we come back to the monitor tab, take note that these are December expiration contracts. So these options are expiring today once the market closes. And so what does that mean for my 200 shares here? And actually what does it mean for my entire position? Well, unless something crazy happens with Beyond Meat stock between now and the market close, then basically what's gonna happen here is my call options, those are going to expire worthless, right? I don't see the stock going from 67 bucks per share all the way to and above 75 in just a few hours. And then for my put options, these will likely get assigned. If Beyond Meat stays below 71 bucks per share by the market close, then yes, chances are I will get assigned on these contracts and have to purchase 200 shares of stock at a price of 71 bucks per share. And that is where the short stock comes into play because I shorted these shares the moment Beyond Meat stock fell below my put strike. Once Beyond Meat fell below 71, that's when my short sell order got triggered and the price I got filled at was very close to 71. I believe it was about 70 bucks and 90 cents or so was my fill price. So ultimately that means, and let me go ahead and bring up the calculator real quick here. If I shorted the stock at a price of $70 and 90 cents per share, and then through the assignment, I have to buy these shares back at a price of $71. That means I lose 10 cents per share times 200 shares. I only lose 20 bucks. And that's obviously a very small manageable amount. So therefore the main idea here is simply to walk away and keep the premium that I sold the options for. Now, unfortunately beyond me has bounced through my put strike so many times up until this point, which forces me to have to repeatedly short and buy back the shares for a small loss each time that unfortunately, no matter what I do with this position, I will face a very, very small loss come the market close. So once this entire position is said and done, I believe I will lose about 60 or 70 bucks or so, a very small amount. And that's fine, losses are always inevitable, they will definitely happen, and that's why it is your job to always keep them as small as possible. So that is my Beyond Meat position. Next up with Nvidia, this one you saw me put on in one of those clips, right? I saw the 267 and a half strike put option, no adjustments, no nothing here on this trade yet. But unfortunately, NVIDIA, if we come to the charts real quick here, NVDA, this stock has fallen significantly in price since putting it on. Now, fortunately today, as you can see here, NVIDIA is recovering a little bit, but it was mostly yesterday with this huge breakdown candle that really hurt. 
That being said, my put strike is still way down here, still very far away from where Nvidia is trading. So nothing to do here on this trade at all yet. So that's Nvidia. Let's come back to the monitor tab. Next up with my NUE short strangle, this one is definitely going to be a loser come the market close today. So in particular, one thing I did try yesterday before the market did close was I adjusted my call strike and actually I moved it up in price. Or basically I rolled it for a very small debit as opposed to usually rolling it for a small credit. So if you recall from earlier in this video, initially I was short the 114 strike call option, right? And the reason why I did move it to the 115 strike call and pay a debit to do so was because NUE did close yesterday at pretty much exactly 114 bucks per share. And I was a bit paranoid about an overnight gap move considering I am already going to be down on this position. There's no way I can make a profit on this one at all. So again, to try and avoid an overnight gap move against me, that's why I just wanted to move my strike a bit further away and I paid about 30 or 40 bucks as a debit to do so. Not a big deal. And then as you can see up here with these orders, NUE was bouncing through my new 115 strike call option a few times. And then ever since this last buy order got triggered, NUE has gone a lot higher ever since then. Right now it's sitting at about $117.70 or so. And also with this position being a December expiration cycle, or having a December expiration cycle, it's going to be a very similar concept with my Beyond Me position. If NUE stays above my short call option this time around, I will very likely get assigned on it and have to sell 100 shares at my strike price at 115. But of course, as you can see here again, if I bought those shares to begin with at a price very close to 115, then if I have to sell them for a few pennies less, it's no big deal. So that's NUE. And then finally here with my Roku position, this is my short strangle, which I put on yesterday. So no adjustments, no anything yet on this position. And actually right now, let's take a look. So I am up a little bit today, about 45 bucks so far, but still overall in the whole position, I'm down by about 30 bucks or so, pretty much unchanged. And then lastly here in regards to my GameStop position, as I mentioned in the previous clip, I was thinking about potentially adjusting this one today and also my NUE position to take in extra credit, but I did decide against that because there is simply not enough premium to collect at this point. So in the case with my NUE position, I'm just gonna hold this probably all the way through expiration. And then for my GameStop position, this one was actually pretty unfortunate. This one here is actually going to be a very large loser. And that's why I decided simply to take it off and just cut my losses. The reason being is GameStop, unfortunately, let's go to the charts real quick, GME. This stock has bounced through my 145 strike put option right around there. So many times that again, I will be taking some pretty substantial losses on the position. And so in an effort to prevent this stock from bouncing through my strikes even more today, that's why, again, I decided to just take it off and cut my losses. And I believe those losses will be somewhere around seven to $800, unfortunately. So definitely a much larger loss than I would like, but still nothing catastrophic by any means, because with perhaps two or three more winning trades, I can totally make back all those losses. So best thing you can do when you lose a little bit of money is simply to keep on trading and make those losses back. And so with that being said, that's going to conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you have questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading or stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.